Hey y'all, welcome to another episode of Function Fridays, brought to you by www.qtptutorial.net. I'm so excited to have y'all here today because we're going to design an amazing function that will be able to use for the rest of your automation careers. Let's go ahead and get started and we will talk about everything as we go through it. So today, the function that I want to design for you guys is going to be called get cell address of some value. So what this function is going to do is it's going to go inside an Excel sheet and it's going to find whatever value you want to get and then it's going to pass you back the cell address of that value. Let me show you an example. Here I created this small little spreadsheet, but you can imagine an automation it can be much more extensive. And we have some columns here, environment URL and so on and so forth. And one thing that you may use this for is you may use it to retrieve variables related to some environment. So for example, let's say you are running in the production environment. So what you can do is you can use this function to find the word called production, get the cell address, and then based on that, you can plug in the right URL, the right username, the right password, and anything else. If you had any more data, you can go ahead and plug all of that in. This function is so amazing. I am sure you guys are going to be using it on a weekly basis. So let's go ahead and design it, run it, and then discuss anything else that we need to discuss. I'm going to close this. And let's open up VBS Edit, one of my favorite tools to use outside of QTP for designing VB scripts. The reason I'm using VBS Edit is one, to get you guys more familiar with external tools. And also, my QTP license server is down, so I can't use it at the moment. But it doesn't matter because I teach you guys to be versatile. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to write function, put end function, and give it a name. Some of you guys may notice I already have a function call here. That's just because. I want to save time, but I'll go through everything. Don't worry. Now, let's go ahead and declare some variables. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and continue. I am going to first start with a very common step for creating an Excel application. So here we created an instance to an Excel application. Now we can access all of its methods. Check it out. We don't want to see the Excel application. I don't want any alerts prompting me blocking our process. Now we're going to create a workbook and a workbook is just what is inside of the Excel application. We'll see if I have some time to dig into this a little bit, but if not, don't worry guys, I promise I'll have Excel videos for you to teach you the whole topic because Excel automation is very, very, very important. Just copy. And what are we going to open? We are going to open the Excel workbook path. Okay, so that means I need to pass it from outside of the function. Next step, we need to create an Excel sheet. 
I'm going to take this worksheets and then okay this also has to come from the outside because it's the sheet name that we're going to refer to next step we need to create a for each loop okay so that we can run through every single cell and find what we need in the Excel sheet. Okay. This will make sure that if there's some kind of error, we just continue searching. Now I'm going to get the cell value. This should be like that. So now I need to declare this guy as well. Okay, cell value. This will get me the cell value in lowercase format. And now we need to make sure that our values match up, the value that we're searching for and the value that we found. If they match up, then we're going to return it. I'm going to trim to make sure I remove any spaces around the word just in case somebody passes an incorrect parameter. Again, bring it down to lowercase so that we have matching cases like that. And we're going to pass this value from up here. So if our cell value that we find in the spreadsheet matches the value that we are searching for, then we need to do something. We should return that cell address. And that's very simple because I created a reference to the cell object here. I can access its methods. Very simple. And the if loop, make sure that we clean up our errors if it are any are thrown. This is just in case nothing is found. If nothing is found, it may throw an error. And then we'll just finish up the for loop. And of course, there's the cleanup memory like always with all Excel related objects. So first we'll have to close. Active workbook you have to close because right now it's active. Okay, then imagine you close the active workbook. Now you need to quit the application. Now you need to set Excel app equal to nothing. I'm going to set Excel workbook equal to nothing. And I'm going to set Excel sheet equal to nothing. That's it. Our function is done. I think so. We can run it. I may have some errors. I may not. But let's go ahead and try it. And then we'll go through it. So here I have the call to the function. Here's the path of the spreadsheet that I created that I showed you guys the workbook path right here. Sheet name, sheet name, and then the target value I want to find is the test one environment. Okay. Actually, let's look for the production environment. Okay. Let's go ahead and run it and see what it returns. Look at that. So it returned cell address of A5. Okay, let's remember that guys. Should I write it down? I'll write it down for you all. A5. And just remember, it always returns the address in this format. So if you want to do anything, you have to either replace these dollar signs or however you want to do it. But you have to deal with these dollar signs because that's what's returned. Let's take a look at the spreadsheet real quick. A5 of production. Is that correct? I think it's correct. Now, imagine what you can do from this point is you can easily, now you have the cell address, right? It's very easy to shift one column to the right and get the URL. Then you can shift another column to the right and have C5 and you can get the username 
and the password and so on and so forth for as much data as you want. And that is why this function is so awesome. So let's go ahead and go through it just so that I can explain to you everything and then we will wrap it up. So over here, created an instance of Excel application. So what does this mean? It means that I created an Excel object where I can access pretty much this kind of stuff. Okay? Where I can go into this part. And inside of this, there are Excel sheets. They are all also objects. If this is real confusing for you guys, I have really awesome videos that will introduce you to objects and so on and so forth. So go take a look at those. But to those of you not confused, I hope this is making sense. So anyways, we created an Excel application and we can access all of its stuff in here. Once we created that, I wanted to make sure that when we're doing stuff to it, that it's not visible and that it doesn't display any alerts. Why I don't want it to be visible is because it takes time for this to open and then close and so on and so forth. And in automation, every second counts. Display alerts, I just wanted to turn it off so that no kind of modals pop up and block our process. Okay? Here, I just created a reference to a workbook. Okay? And I opened that workbook. I opened some workbook based on the path. And now I have access to this workbook. Not just the Excel application, but this specific Excel workbook. Over here, I created an Excel sheet. And now I can access all of the Excel sheet methods. Meaning, I can go into here, into sheet one, and do stuff to it. Whether it's finding values, whether it's typing stuff in, whether it's inserting borders, whether it's shifting columns around, I can do anything you can do in here with Excel, you can go ahead and do with this Excel sheet object. Afterwards, we created a very simple for each loop that will run through every single cell. So it will run from the beginning all the way up until Excel sheet dot used range. So this means that we are running from here up until however many cells we used, okay? So uh, we used this many cells. If we had more data, like up to here, that would be the used range, okay? Afterwards, we have to make sure that we have this statement in here just in case any errors are thrown. We want to just go ahead and continue. That's what this means. If an error occurs, don't worry about it, just continue. Then we got the cell value. This cell value comes from the spreadsheet. So for example, let's say I am here and I get the cell value, which is URL. I can be over here, get this cell value, which is this. Okay? Afterwards, we just need to compare. We will compare the cell value that we get with the target value that we are searching for. So this comes from outside of the function. And both of them were just making lowercase just to make sure that capitalization and that kind of stuff doesn't mess it up. Because if someone put production lowercase p, that value would not be found. And we want to make sure that it's case insensitive. So if these values match up, we just grab that cell address and we return it to the function. And then based on that, we can do anything that we want with the cell address. And then finally we clean up and that's it. All right, guys, that's it for Function Fridays today. I wanted to say thank you all so, so, so much for tuning in, for taking your time out of your day to come listen to me teach you something. It's a pleasure to help you guys out. And please feel free to leave any comments, feedback, concerns, anything, whatever you want to hear. I am always striving to improve and I always want to help 
to make you guys better automation engineers. And go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you do. And you will be receiving these Function Fridays videos every single Friday. And then if you want, you can get the code with these Function Fridays by going to qtpeatstoil.net, subscribing to the email, and you'll get that code on a weekly basis so that you don't have to sit and retype it. And plus, you'll get an awesome description that will make it very easy for you to follow. Anyways, I think that's enough. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have an amazing Friday. Take care.